Friday was uh, Energy Day at COP, and it's really good to see that there's a, a real increased focus and interest on sustainable access to energy for the poorest. Uh, I just want to talk about two uh, events that I was a panelist on that really had, a, had this as a key focus. Uh, the first one was uh, a, an event coordinated by or run by ACCESS and WWF. ACCESS is the Alliance of CSOs for Clean Energy Access. It's a coalition of civil society organisations that are coming together to, to learn, share best practice in terms of delivery and also in terms of better policy and engagement at national and international policy levels. Uh, the focus of the ACCESS event was on productive uses of energy. Uh, this is really upping the ante where in, in areas where the grid can't reach, um, providing higher levels of electrification so that rural economies can really th thrive. Uh, the second uh, event was by, uh, run by UNDP as part of the Jeff Small Grants Program, uh, and many of the small grants uh, that, that the, the program give out also have a productive uses focus and are bridging energy services across uh, household, uh, biz small scale businesses, and community level services like health and education. And the focus on the discussion there was really how to maximize impacts of these types of projects, uh, as well as measure those impacts. There were three key messages that came out of these two events. The first was that uh, energy access for productive uses can create these economic uh, opportunities in, in rural economies and really boost resilience. But there needs to be a much more cross-cutting and holistic approach to, to, to delivering these energy services. Um, I'd like to just illustrate what that means with two examples from some of the work that IID and partners have been doing. The first is uh, a program of work that IID has been doing with CAFOD and national level partners called the Energy Delivery Model Approach. And this is looking at local level planning that's much more inclusive and builds energy services around development-based needs. So it starts with the impact end of the needs, such as, for example, improving the income of a coffee farmer, and works back from there at using uh, planning tools with local stakeholders to really understand what the problem is and to be delivering not only the energy service, but the other components in there that are non-energy related at the same time that are required to, to solve the problem. And the idea with this is that it also helps to build local trust, knowledge, understanding and buy-in. The second uh, piece of work that we've been doing is with uh, HIVOS in Tanzania, the Energy Change Lab. And this is bringing together uh, stakeholders uh, in a, in a multi-stakeholder type platform at the national level to really uh, think about some of these sector-wide issues that cross-cut into other, se other sectors such as agriculture and fisheries. And, and, and looking at some of those sector-wide problems, then prototyping, experimenting on solutions on the ground. Now, within the energy space, uh, one of the key things in Tanzania at the moment uh, are productive uses through, uh, for example, local microhydro. And there's a big opportunity for developers, private sector developers, to be putting in installations for these. But one of the issues that they face is really building that demand uh, for, for business use in very poor areas. Um, and so one of the things that the, the lab is looking at is how you really build local energy, uh, local uh, business support services um, to uh, and provide finance for those types of services so that um, so that businesses can 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 develop and, and start using the the electricity as the services rolled out. The second key message is around uh, nationally determined contributions or NDCs, which are a hot topic at COP. Um, many of the NDCs are beginning to include uh, energy access, but it's very much focused at household level and very low levels of electrification. So that's for basic lighting services. So we see that there's a real need to be uh, upping the ante with this and, and including those productive use uh, 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 type services w within the NDC definitions. The third area is that um, the energy sector more than many uh, s other sectors tends to be quite top-down and quite focused on, on infrastructure 
and, and uh, uh, grid extension as part of that. What we're seeing uh, with, with access, which is bringing together all of the, of the CSOs, now 58 members and, and across sub-Saharan Africa and Asia, expanding rapidly, is that there's a real need for uh, inclusion of, first of all, civil society organizations as, as part of delivery because they're, they're trusted agents within the last mile, but also that these multi-stakeholder platforms that I mentioned earlier, which are really important for, for this sort, sorts of problem solving, traditionally haven't really included CSOs in anything more than token consultation. So there's a, much, there's a need for a much uh, uh, more meaningful inclusion of civil societies and the creation of these types of multi-stakeholder platforms.